So this is the first video in trying to document the refurbishing of my Gearhart 1924-ish cylinder. And specifically, the problem with the cylinder is that, and this is the 80 slot cylinder, is that a couple of the tops of the fins on the cylinder that hold the needles, like this one right here, is chipped. And there's actually four of them when you when you look around the hole, there's another one, and there are the other two. While I can actually use this cylinder as is with the needles in there, um, what happens is that since the needles stick up and the tops of them and the working part of the latch hook needles are towards the top of those, in the places where there's larger chips as the wool or yarn gets pulled across, it actually pulls the needle closer to the other one and the resulting fabric, and I'll try to find an example of the fabric where that happens, but the resulting fabric actually has columns of stitches that are closer together than the rest of them. Now, there's two, repair, two types of repairs I'm planning on doing with this cylinder. The first one is, I actually have two of the chips from the cylinders that I've saved over the years. And so that's the actual chipped off portion of the, the fin from the cylinders. So for those I'm planning on using an epoxy called JB Weld, and it's specifically used for, for metal. And uh, so I'll be actually gluing those on. We found a, we were thinking about using a different glue, but the time it takes to set was too long. and. You can't really hold those chips in. I mean, it's really fine. And so when you're taking a look at trying to hold in that piece while the glue sets, oftentimes it requires too much time. And so we found a quick setting JB Weld metal fix that will hopefully set up quickly for that. For the other ones for which we don't have a, an existing chip, we're planning on using a different uh, pro, uh, product by JB Weld. It's called JB Weld um, Metal Putty, I think, or something like that. I'll go show you those as well. So here's an example of a tube, a tube of fabric that I knit using the 60, uh, the 80 cylinder, the 80 slot cylinder. And what you see is that in the place where there's chips, and I can tell exactly where these two chips are, you can kind of see the two rows of stitches that are closer together than the rest. And you can tell exactly where that is on this one because it happens to be on the cylinder where the two chips are kind of close together. Where are we at here? So here's where this is. And so as those two, those two needles, or those two slots, as the needles come together, you can see it creates a slight variation in the fabric. And so we're trying to refurbish the, the cylinder so that those needles stay separated just like the rest of the needles do. And there's no inconsistency in the actual fabric that gets created. So these are the two products that we purchased to try to fix the chips on the top of the cylinder. So the first one is JB Weld Quick Weld for metal. And it actually is an epoxy and you mix the two tubes to create a, an epoxy that uh, has some metal in it that bonds to metal and uh, is quick set. It actually sets in about five to ten minutes, which is much faster than most of the glues or epoxies that you can find. The other thing that we're looking at using is something called steel stick. And steel stick is actually more like a putty. And when you squeeze it out of this tube, it actually mixes from a center tube that you can't see in this photo, but uh, it creates a putty clay-like substance that you can mold a little bit. You have about five minutes in which to mold it into something. And so we're hoping to use that as to create the fin, uh, the tip of the fin for those where we don't have a chip to glue back in. So one of the ideas we had was from Pete, the CSM guru out on Ravelry, 
who's done an enormous amount of, or it seems like an enormous amount of refurbishing. And basically what he said was, you want to use JB Weld products to create both gluing in the chips and also creating um, refurbished fins that are missing. So I basically just took a, a plastic bottle that we are, that we were finished with. Uh, this one happens to be a vino, but we wanted something that was thick, relatively rigid, but also easy to cut and mold and shape. And so basically what I realized was when I cut a strip out of the Aveeno plastic, it actually fits pretty well into the slot of the cylinder um, that fits this. So this is a 12 gauge needle, so it's probably a little less than 12 gauges, but it fits in there pretty firmly. But we also need to fill in the top piece, which is about four times as wide as the um, 12 gauge cylinder slot for the needle. And so what I did is I chopped up a, a bunch of these smaller pieces. And so in essence, what we're looking to do is, since this is where one of the chips are, for both the gluing repair and the cre refashioning a new tip to one of these fins is, in essence, actually it's a little bit easier, I found, if you take three of the small ones and the one long one and group the three on either side, two on one side and, four, and one on the other, and then insert the four into the bigger part of the needle slot and push it down as far as it will go. And then take the other longer one and push it all the way to the bottom so that it all goes to the bottom. So what you end up with is a side of the fin that will act as both a, a support when we glue in a piece of it, but it will also act as hopefully a mold when we form some of the epoxy uh, moldable um, JB Weld product. And we'll actually do the same thing on the other side. We'll actually create the same two on one side, one on the other type of format on the other side of the fin, insert it in there as best we can. It fits in there pretty snugly. Four of them seem to fit in there pretty snugly for this particular size plastic. And then push the other one all the way down. Now the problem we're going to have with this is, or we don't know what problems we're going to have with this actually, but one of the issues is obviously we're going to need to be able to insert for the molding of it, insert some of the um, molded putty into that into that crevice between the two plastic pieces, um, and I'm not quite sure how easily that's going to form in there. We also need to make sure that the epoxies don't stick to this this vinyl, um, so we're going to need to make sure that it either doesn't stick or we do something to the vinyl so that it doesn't uh, form to it. But hopefully that's going to be our strategy, and uh, we're going to look at other strategies too. Um, but that's our at least our first effort, and we'll show you how it goes when we get to it.